a pair of AL clubs. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the New York Yankees. 2K Sports and Major League Baseball. It's a Sunday afternoon, Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with Steve Phillips and John Kruk. I'm Gary Thorne. Action coming. When you have a ball player like A-Rod in your lineup, you are looking for some big-time offense. We'll see if he gives it. A great day ahead here at Yankee Stadium with New York City as the backdrop. We thank you for being with us for this day game. And we're going to see the left-hander Andy Pettit make the start. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? A good looking lefty on the mound right here against the lineup that can put some runs up on the board. So pretty even matchup. So it's going to come down to which side executes better than the other. Oftentimes we say good pitching can beat good hitting. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. And Pesednik's batting. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. They've been in control after winning game one of the three game series against the Yankees. Now oh, this club's just lost one of their last ten ball game. You talk about a hot team. This is it. He swings on a pitch that was in the dirt. That's a strike. Whoa. And that one loss came on the road. This hit sharply towards the hole. In time for the up. Here's a look at how the Yankees will match up defensively. Any picks here Steve. Mark Teixeira is one of the best defensive first basemen I've ever seen. There's not a play he can't make. He has great range, great instincts, and the ability to hit the pitcher on the run covering first base. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. And a struggling season in 2009 for Alexei Ramirez. Here was a guy that they thought they would put at the top of their lineup. He'd steal a lot of bases, but unfortunately he got off to such a bad start. Well, Andy Pettit went after him, got the strike. It's 0-2. Well, Alexei Ramirez, yet another one of the uh, Cuban defectors getting a chance to play Major League Baseball. Well, the White Sox seem to think that he could be a top of the order guy. He struggled in 2009, but if he can rebound from the 2009 season and have a season like he did in 2008, and along with Gordon Beckham, they have a great one two punch. And it's Paul Canerco now. We saw their last game, you saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. Well, Andy Pettit went after him, got the strike. It's 0-2. Well, you can tell his timing way off after seeing him swing at that four-seamer. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. And the Yankees getting ready to start this one off. And doing the pitching, it'll be John Danks. He's going to start for Chicago. And Steve, what's he got in his mind now as he pitches against these Yankees? As a hitter, when you face John Danks, you have to be patient. You know he's a guy that wants to expand the zone, but he'll give up a walk and he'll give up a home run. So hitters counter critical. Work the count. Get that 2-0 pitch, that 3-1 pitch, and then sit on the fastball and look to drive it. And the first pitch. Ball. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1-0. His average last year, big time, 375 against the White Sox. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well-executed play right there, Gary. Hustled over, got to first base, touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. And here's Robinson Cano. Swung on, that is hit. And Cano is retired. And now presented by Pepsi, a look at the Yankees starters. Thoughts, John, anybody stand up? Well, Alex Rodriguez is such a great player. You never expect him to make an out. So he's always going to be on base. What it seems like he's so tough to pitch to because he has power to all fields. And the fact that he will take a walk makes him dangerous for the rest of that team. To share into the batter's box. Certainly uh, for Danks. Well the problems is, is learning to stay out of that too fat part of the strike zone. Sometimes he just puts pitchers right down the middle and really doesn't have to because he's he's solid enough to keep the ball down low most of the time. Well, he really is, and he has such great mechanics, too. I mean, he and Mark Burley, they're very... Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Oh. From his knees, he got him. What a play! No strikeouts, but you talk about confidence. Four pitches, three batters gone. Nothing doing for either side offensively here in New York. 
leading it off, Carlos Bill. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one, swing the bat well. Swings at that breaking ball, but misses. It's 0 1. No hits, two ABs last year against Sandy Pettit. Strike two. strike two. Now, with no balls, two strikes, Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. This is the go to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. This one towards Granderson. As he gets to it for the out. Now we got a moment here to look at the teams leading the way in ERA. Brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox number one. The Yankees second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth, the Twins. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. Well, set up for a low-scoring game right here. Two of the teams among the best in baseball, limiting the opposition to run scored. And Beckham's in the box. Well, a pretty typical year for Andy Pettit at this stage in his career. Yeah, he got the 14 wins, the ERA over five. But I tell you what he did do. In the 194 and two-thirds innings, they didn't expect that from him. He's a solid. Swung on and ripped towards second. That's the second out of the inning. Certainly Pettit at this point of his career as the uh, all-time leader in baseball history in postseason wins with 18 is the kind of pitcher, even though he doesn't overpower, the team that plays behind him just has confidence they've got a chance to win. Well, he's a winner, and that's that's a thing that can be bred in you from a young. He swings now and really hit that. And Granderson grabs that one, and the side's retired. So a tidy. Folks here enjoying an afternoon of baseball. Nice day so far, just a few clouds. Alex Rodriguez. Danks gets set and delivers towards center field. And the catch by Rios. A lot of tough teams in the American League. Let's take a look at where the Yankees sit right now in the rankings. First in walks, second in ERA. And this power pitching staff ranks number two in strikeouts. Quality stuff getting a lot of swings and misses. Cutter just misses. 1 and 0. Oh. Here's Danks with a 1 0 oh pitch. And Posada swings and misses at that one. We'll even it up. This guy likes to pull the string on hitters, Gary, particularly if they don't have a lot of patience at the plate. They'll get you thinking fastball and then pull the string and swing it and miss it. And the catch by Rios. Two away. He really has to go as this one hangs up just long enough for him to run underneath and make the play. And it's Nick Swisher at the plate. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. Off the wall, right field. And Swisher's going to try to stretch it. And he's there in second ahead of the play. Sometimes risky business when you go after that extra base. Yeah, Gary, that dive in the second base was the key as well. He didn't slow down at all, able to extend his arms and get in there. Indeed. And Curtis Granderson to bat. Korea number just a 223 average off the white side. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks towards center field, and it's through. Base hit for Granderson. Swisher heading home. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Well, anytime you can get a guy on base who can steal bases, it puts so much pressure on the opponent. Let's see if they can get him around to score a run. And it's Nick Johnson now. Well, he gets a walk a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Danks gets set and delivers. And it's 0-2. Nick Johnson, he doesn't want a K here. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Still 0-2. Oh, and Granderson takes off. A great pitch. That'll catch Nick Johnson looking for strike three. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. No runs yet for the Yankees. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Cruck and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne.
The pitch from Pettit. He makes contact. Line drive. And that's going to go through. That could be trouble. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, what a great swing right there. And anytime you can put yourself in scoring position with no outs, you're looking for big things to happen. And Mark Tiana, one of the best batting averages in the league. Here's the pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. That's Tremendous play. situation now for the White Sox. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And it's fouled off. Foul! The pitch. Foul! And he fouls off another one. Well, even though you're in the defensive mode like this batter is, there's still no guarantee you're not going to strike out. 0-2 count, very difficult oh. not to strike out, but he's doing everything he can. He took that low pitch to foul it off. Let's see what happens here. Now Posada sets up. Swung on, line to right field. One away, and that will hold the runners at the corners. Here are some teams that have uh, really been seeing the ball well. The highest batting averages for the last 10 games, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. Third, the Yankees. The A's fourth. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, there's nothing more fun in baseball when your whole lineup is hitting the baseball. And over the last 10 games, the batting average of these two teams have been absolutely phenomenal. And that's what you love. Both teams at the top of their games offensively going at it head to head. It falls in there and Krasinski will score. Tian going to third. The throw safe at third. At the plate. Situations the repeating side. themselves First here. Down. A chance to produce and they Alexi are. Ramirez. Well, this is exactly how you plan a game. You make sure you take advantage early in the game, get that offense going to get that run on the board. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And some production being seen in this game early. They've got a chance now to extend the lead. Uh, Gary, we just saw quality at bat right there. He got the job done. When he got his pitch, he knew what to do with it, and he delivered. Pitch on the way. Swung on, lined over the first baseman's head. That's down. The run's coming in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. First baseman, number 14, Paul Tenerto. Now he tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off outstanding job at the plate. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead in the count and then you give up the base hit. Here comes the runner for the plate. RBI scores as he comes in. At the plate. Well, clearly he would have loved to have found a hole out there but at least in making this out and the pitch over the heart of the plate he did something right by advancing the runner. Now we'll see if they can take advantage of that and get that run home. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. Now that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. Able to knock in a few here in the third. Working with the lead now. The White Sox on top, three to nothing. Joe Girardi caught there. Bit of a hold he's watched this team dig so far, strategizing a comeback attempt right now. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. In order to throw that fastball away from the hitter, you have to get great extension out in front. Nice job of pitching. Good movement to that cutter, and he's in the hole now, 0-2. Oh! 
And it holds at 0-2. On the way. Ball. One two pitch coming. Ball. And he swings and hits this one foul. Well, what you're looking for when you're behind an account is you hope the pitcher makes a mistake. And this. On the ground to short. And Ramirez feels the ball. And Gardner retired. Number two. And Derek Jeter up. Well, anytime you have the label of captain of the New York Yankees, there's a special thing that goes with that, and Derek Jeter is the epitome of what this team's all about. They're a no-nonsense group, although Nick Swisher kind of changed that a little bit in 2009, but he's the leader in the clubhouse and on the field for this team. He sets the tone for everything the Yankees do. Beckham, that retires Jeter. And here are the standings in the Central Division as we move into May. Brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that. Towards the middle. And that'll put Cano on first. That plate. will bring up Mark Teixeira. First pitch. Number 25. Well, anytime you Mark look at a lineup and you see Mark Teixeira's name in it, you got to expect that there's going to be some run production coming from his spot in the lineup. But not only that, he's a great defender who saves his team as many runs as he drives in. 0 for 1 thus far. Well, working on the 0 1 count now. He's got three hits, six at bats against John Danks. And Ramirez fields the ball. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. And so a good inning for John Danks. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crook. And Beckham's in the box. He's going to get us started here in the fourth. And the first pitch. Look out as that one runs in and hits him. I think it's safe to say, Gary, that's going to leave a mark. That hurts from here. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Now, Gary, as we saw that hitter get hit with the pitch right there, it's just a mechanical issue. He'll get that ironed out a little bit, but I don't think it's intentional, certainly. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. And now we'll see if he can regroup here, get control of that pitch again, see how willing he is to throw it again right away. Well, what you don't want to do is let it get in your head when you start to worry about pitching inside or getting too close to anybody. So he's got to make sure his head's right. Swing and lined up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Fantastic chance here. It's going to be Przinski. He's the league leader in ribbies. First pitch on the way. Strike, Strike one. one. Pettit gets him swinging. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense and somebody they've really come to rely Strike upon. Two. And that's a strike. A.J. Przinski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Had a real strong Get offensive out. game last time out. Three big base hits. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Mark Tien looking to knock in a run. In the top ten in hits. First one to T in. Here's the pitch. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. That's two gone. And the runners will have to hold at first and second. And fans, there's more baseball coming this Friday. It'll be Kevin Euclid and the Boston Red Sox. They play host to the New York Yankees. Game gets underway 7 o'clock Eastern. Katze into the batter's box. The pitch from Pettit. Line fair down the line in right. And that's a base hit. Katze on it first. And he scores from second base. Now Boy, the continuation the here of this White offense Sox. is called big Left time field momentum. Field number 24, Scott Pacetti. But what an absolutely great job of hitting right there. That pitch down and in, bearing in on him. And he fought it off to get that big base hit. Here's the first pitch. 
There's a swing and a liner towards first. Out. So they pick up a run on two hits and they leave a couple. The White Sox four run lead. It's Alex Rodriguez to lead it off. Number 13, Alex Rodriguez. And now the pitch to Rodriguez. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Look, Gary, the way this is going so far in the fourth, I mean, they do have three hits. Uh, so they've had a couple of base runners, but I think that because they're not mounting hit after hit, they may have to put some plays on to get the runners moving. And the catch by Rios. One away. Number 20. And here's what he pulls up. Well, looking for a bounce back performance today. Some disappointment after last game striking out twice. Here's the pitch to Posada. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1 0. No hits, two ABs last year against Danks. Cutter just off the black and he falls behind 2 0. Way back to the backstop, not a pretty pitch, no damage. And here's the delivery. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And that falls for a base hit. Posada's not stopping yet. He's not stopping there. He's on his way to third. Or when he shoots this one toward the wall, you know he's thinking three all the way. And with his speed, he makes it there easily. Now, with only one out, the manager has a big decision how they're going to pitch to this next guy. RBI chance now, Nick Swisher. Great season, top ten in RBI. Banks gets set and delivers. Change up in there for a called strike. Hit in the air to left center. And it gets through as Swisher will pick up the run. Well, that's one of those pitches when it leaves the pitcher's hand, the manager tells him, oh, don't swing, don't swing. Oh, great job, good piece of hit. How he got his bat on that, I have no idea. First count on Granderson, here it comes. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, Curtis Granderson has the ability to hit for a lot of extra bases. 30 home. And it's hit well off the bat of Granderson. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Fantastic chance here. Curtis Granderson, one of those batters whose on base percentage is affected by the fact he strikes out more than you want to do. He needs to be able to get on a little more, set the table for the middle of the order. Yeah, that's on the ground to second. He's up with it. Gets one at second. Back to first. Not in time. One and two won't get it. The second baseman didn't have enough on that one to get that out. That was a close play. If he had gotten rid of the ball a little bit more quickly, he might have had it. Good hustle down the line. Gardner at the plate. Boy, they've been that swung on and a liner here. And another. Wow, that hitting coach is smiling. And that brings up Derek Jeter. He goes Number right two. with the pitch and slaps Gary the ball in the left field. And if you try and pull that pitch, you're probably not even going to get the bat on it. That's a ground ball to second base if he pulls that one. Hit up the middle. John Danks comes off the mound. After four innings of work, he's allowed just the two runs as they lead this one. Four innings in the books here at Yankee Stadium. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. And an RBI double this last time. Alexei. Ramirez. First pitch to him. Strike one. Cut it. Gets him swinging. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Hit sharply towards the hole. And that's out number one stepping in the back. First baseman. And here's Paul Canerco. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that D8. There's a swing. A ball hit high and deep. Straight away left field. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three.
Now this pitch low and in, and he had no problem catching up to it. Get that bat around. Keep those hands behind. He did. Nice hit. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. Base is empty with one away. First pitch to Quinton. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Steve, a big fly like that at this point in the ball game. You, you start thinking, you know something? We're going to win this ball game. Well, backbreaker, boy, that kind of power shows the other team that. You know what? You always have a chance to catch up or extend your lead. Strike three. Clinton on a swing and a miss. He's out. Boy, a nice looking set of pitches that time. He didn't daddle around with the strike zone. Well, nothing wasted. Just three pitches over the plate. Sits him down. The pitch from Pettit. Swing and a rocket toward short. That should be a base hit. So that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. Top five AL and run scored. Alex Rios. Two outs and a man on first. Now the first pitch. Strike one. Pettit gets him swinging. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox up three. And so Robinson Cano set to go. He had a single in his last time up. Robinson Cano. And Cano ready for the first pitch. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. Two for four record against John Danks. And it's fouled away. He's ready. Danks with a 2-1 pitch. Tian. And Cano is retired. For the New York First Number Mark Teixeira is a play. Well, you can't imagine as a manager how important it would be to have a guy in the middle of your lineup that hits third or fourth. You know, Mark Teixeira drives in 122 runs, hits third. There's a smash towards the hole. And he'll be tagged out along the first baseline. Number 13. It's going to be Rodriguez now. Last time up, blew up. Danks gets set and delivers towards center field. Rios will field. And he's there to retire the sun. And they aren't able to get anything going in this half inning. Three up, three away. White Sox. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. And he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance runs so important. It's going to be Przinski. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Strike one. Pettit gets him swinging. The pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. And that's out number one as he takes it to the bat. Third number 20. And Mark T into bat. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0 and 1. Ground ball, Rodriguez. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. Now we'll bring up Mark Kotze. We're heading into May. This is a look at the standings for the East, brought to you by State Farm. Yankees in first place. It's the Blue Jays in second, Red Sox in third, Orioles fourth, and it's the Rays in the last slot. Well, they came into the season with great expectations, as they typically do in New York. But sometimes things let down, not this year. Yankees playing Yankee baseball, sitting on top and making their fans very happy.
The pitch from Pettit takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Hit hard on the ground to short. That's one out. On to first, safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. And for Sednik's batting. So I'm going to try to make some contact in this ball game today because he swung and missed a little bit too much, striking out twice in his last game. First pitch on the way. Hard grounded a short, and it gets through a two for four ball game. Now Tremendous situation for now for the White Sox. Shortstop. Steve, sometimes that pitch down the now middle you want to drive. He chose it. to take it the other way. Well, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Here it comes. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. Fastball swung out and missed, and the side's retired. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. And the Yankees, it'll be their turn coming up. And Jorge Posada. Oh. Number 20, Jorge Posada. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Swing and a miss on the cutter, 0-1. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks. Line drive. That one right through the defense. A base hit. That will bring Nick Swisher up. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Today is the last game of this New York series. They'll get a homestand started against the Royals. That's a three-game series. And then a home series facing the Jays and their all-star Vernon Wells. Lots of home games. That's always a good thing. Leads the division in RBIs. He grabs it off the hop. And there's one. And a double play. They got a both. A Keystone area can get a little rough, Steve. Nice turn on the double play. Just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. And we've got Granderson batting. If you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And he's there to retire the side. Well, how about that? Only needed four pitches to set down the guys. Tremendous. The White Sox still on top. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And he starts Canerco out. Lined up the middle. Oh, dive, cheater. He's got it. And he's out at first. What an out. He makes a terrific play and a fine throw. Now, this should have been a base hit. The hitter thought the ball was going through, but a tremendous effort keeping it in the infield and getting the out. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. Lifetime. He's picked up no hits. Three at bats off Hacevas. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Well, the two-seamer has his timing way off. He swung and missed. Swung way too early. That one swung on. Hit in the air to deep right center field. This one rolls through to the wall. Now, well, it's a pretty place. good pitch to hit right here. Ball. And he gets the Second good part of the bat on Number the ball. 15. Now he's in scoring Jordan. position Second. with just one out. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. Boy, what a chance he's got here for the White Sox. Here's the first pitch. There is a swing and a liner. Throw got him. That is one heck of a play. Back to had a dive and still had time to get up and make the throw. That's how hard that was hit. The accuracy of that throw is what's tremendous. When you're moving that quickly, rushing to get to your feet, it's awfully tough to be that accurate. It's Alex Rios. Great offensive opportunity for him. Line drive. That's foul towards first. He delivers. 
Here's a swing and a line drive. And Cano's there to retire the side. So they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score. Time to stretch him out here in the Bronx. Leadoff batter will get a shot at it later on in this inning. A look there at the skipper Joe Girardi. And uh, tough decisions, maybe or maybe not. This bench needs some inspiration. He'll try to give it to him. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. Fastball just misses. One and zero. Oh. Oh, nine outs to go right now, and, and leading by three. I mean, I think you have to start throwing strikes. Just go at the hitters, force them to put it in play. Do not give them free passes. Ah, good moving cutter, and it's one and two now. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infielders. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. Rios will field. Rome's over, puts it away. The lineup's crossing home the most. We look at our state farm leaderboard. Run scored over the last ten. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. The Angels third. The Yankees fourth. And fifth best, the A's. Well, there are stretches during the season when it, every team struggles to score runs. But these two teams right now in these last 10 games have found a way to be able to throw runners across the board. They are doing it in every single way conceivably possible. They're doing it with power. They're doing it with speed. They're complete offenses, and the pitchers better be good or else their ERA is going to skyrocket. Now 0-2, Danks with some pitches to play with. Offensively, now they've got to start to work the count. They've got to try to get base runners on and get things going here. I mean, you've got one out here in the seventh inning. It's not too late to try to make up some of this deficit. Still 0-2. Oh, Danks gets set and delivers. Line drives. And it's caught by Ramirez. And it's Derek Jeter in the box now. Over for three to this point. Now, if you're just tuning in, you've missed some outstanding defensive plays today. This guy can flash the leather. First pitch to Jeter. On the ground to second. Beckham throws to first side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. It's going to be Przinski. AJ Krasinski. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. Number 25. And Mark Tiana. Two for three thus far. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swings and grounds this one foul wide a third. Here's the pitch. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, if you can ever read a slider coming out of a pitcher's hand, sometimes what happens is you're more focused on what the ball's going to do as far as the break goes than you are with timing the swing, and you hesitate for that split second, and it gets in on you, and you swing late. That's what happened here. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. Bounced into a fielder's choice as last time. Here's the pitch. Smash towards the hole. And the side's retired. Teixeira catches it. Comes in up. And so Robinson Cano is set to go. Try it again here. Just one for three thus far. Robinson Cano. And Cano ready for the first pitch. Gets him to chase that one up and out of the strike zone for strike one. Obviously getting late right now, Gary. And I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. Now 0-2, Dax with some pitches to play with. He gets two quick strikes on the hitter, but he can't be too selective now. He's got to go right at him. Swing and a shot to third. Now That's one away. For the New York Yankees, first base, 
Number 25. And it's Mark Teixeira at the plate. Fun the thing with Mark Teixeira is you can pencil him in for pretty much every day play, 156 games. This guy can do a lot of things on a baseball. A smash to first, and it gets through. There it is, his first hit after struggling here today. Too late, and he is safe at second. Certainly one of the great stories of 09, the Yankees' first month with Mark Teixeira. Everything going south, the return of A-Rod, and Mark Teixeira never looked back. Well, I questioned it. This one's grounded to second. Beckham. And he's safe. Boy, did he just beat that throw. Just kind of lean in, Number Steve, 20. and slap that thing the other way in that kind of pitch. No, that you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. He grabs it. The second, there's one. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. A productive hit right there. See the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. Now we've got Nick Swisher. You get a feeling watching them, they're feeling comeback fever, Steve, going on. Grounded up the middle. Gets through, tying run on. And Ramirez feels the ball. And he is safe at third ahead of that play. Plays having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. Well, Curtis Granderson has that look in his eyes. He wants to deliver for his team. That's why they respect him so much and why they like him up in these kind of situations. Flew out last time. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. That one's grabbed. Side retired. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. The Yankees, they are trying to will their way back into this game. The top of the order is due up next. And for those of you catching up with us, hi. I'm Gary Thorne along with John Crook and Steve Phillips bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And the first pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed. 0 and 1. That one swung on, hit in the air. That one is foul. He makes contact, line drive. And Cano with the catch. You know, sometimes you have to hit them where they're not. That was a shot right there, but they hit it right to the second baseman for an out. Here's the pitch. Ramirez will foul that one away. Here's the pitch. Up the middle. Oh, mercy caught it. He's got it in the glove. What an amazing play. That's some kind of play by the pitcher right there. You release the ball. You think maybe I can take a little bit of a break. The ball comes right back at you. He got his glove up and made the out. And he starts Canerco out. And that swung on and missed 0 and 1. A lifetime 312 against the Yankees. A swing and a ball hit high and deep down the line and right. Out of here. Goodbye, home run. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three. No, he did it again his second of the day. And now you got to wonder, can he do another one? I might get it done. I mean, the White Sox lead expanded here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Number 20, Carlos Quinton. Two outs and nobody on. First pitch to Quinton. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Pitch on the way. Hit hard on the ground towards third. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. 
So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox up three. And here's Nick Johnson. 0 for 3 to this point. Number 18, Nick Johnson. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. Got him out with a cut fastball for a strike. Well, like right now, they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So, base runners the key. Do not run into outs. Be conservative on the bases. You're down three. Ground ball headed for the middle. Back up. One down. For the New York game. Two outs remaining in this game. You're up by three runs. I think right now you just want to make plays. Don't walk anybody and catch the ball. Get outs. Trade outs for runs. The first pitch. Sets him off with a breaking pitch inside. One and oh. Looked at Dank's pitch, one and one. One one on the way. He swings and lines this one softly towards the left side. Two away. Well, one more out to close this one out, Gary. And obviously a successful day up by three and and uh, a safe situation. So, you know, obviously looking to try to close this one out and uh, get ready for tomorrow. And it's Derek Jeter in the box now. Bases empty and two down. First pitch to Jeter. This one's oh. grounded foul wide of first. Let's go, Yankees. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks. And that one is a fly ball. This could do it. And it falls in. Hitting streak continues. Second base. Number 24. Batting Robinson Cano. Cano. A runner on first with two outs. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago is ready to try and close this one out. Well, it's about time. I mean, I don't know what they weren't seeing. Headed for the middle. And makes its way through. The tying run will come to bat. The throw. And he's in there. Could not get him. Well, he's still playing back in this situation. A well-hit ball just getting by him for a base hit. Now, oh, Gary, this guy's tough at the plate. Switch hitter Mark Teixeira. Very tough guy in these sorts. Line towards second. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today. Allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Time now to honor the Pepsi Clutch performer. Definitely a difference maker in this one, John Danks. Well, you know, Gary, there's no way you can win baseball games without great starting pitching. And he came through in this one with the most important. And Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. That's a good victory. Hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. And until next time, this is Gary Thorne, along with John Crock and Steve Phillips. We'll catch you at the yard.